Manifest, manifest, Jonathan Nelson. You know, one, one of the hardest, toughest, you know, one of the most challenging things as believers in the body of Christ is manifesting or literally what that means is us becoming what's in us. us it, it now um, moving from inside of us to now uh, on the outside of us, us turning into it's almost like I think of a butterfly, uh, butterfly caterpillar where, you know, that caterpillar goes into that cocoon. And while it's in that cocoon, there's a season of where you look from it on the outside and the cocoon does not look appealing, does not look attractive. But over time, there's a meta um, morphing going on, uh, metamorphic, you know, morphication that's going on. And that uh, could, that, that caterpillar is turning into a beautiful butterfly. And soon what that caterpillar has become will be manifested, it will be made known, everybody will be made aware of it. And so when we talk about manifestation, we're talking about um, a walk so close with Christ where everything he put in us begins to exude from us, begins to spill over out of us. Um, it, it becomes seeable by all around us. And that's also known as the glory of God. You know, we become manifestors of God's glory by allowing his will to be done in our life. And if we look at John chapter four, let me give you a little bit of word today. Uh, we look at John chapter four and I uh, want to read verses 31 through 35 here. And the Bible says, New Living Translation, that meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food. You know nothing about verse 33. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other other verse 34. Then Jesus explained my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know, the saying four months between planting and harvest. But I said, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for the harvest. I want to speak briefly uh, today from this this message. Wake up and look at. The fields. This is uh, my, my key verse here is John 4, verse 35. Um, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for the harvest. So, um, one of the hardest things, challenging things we're going to do is um, we, we will have to do is to manifest what God has placed in us. And remember, manifestation is, is nothing but um, an outward, public, corporate display of the glory of God in the earth, um, in our lives and through us. So knowing our assignment is only half the battle. The other half is completing it. See, there cannot be a manifestation of God's glory and what God has placed in us if we do not understand our assignment and our purpose. So knowing our assignment is only half the battle. When you know what you've been called, not only um, to do, but what who you've been, been called to become, then and only then can you now begin to work on completing that assignment. So many companies, businesses, and even individuals are limited right now in how productive and effective they can be in seasons like this because the work they do is of this world and therefore the resources they depend on are of this world and are limited. But blessed be to the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for our heavenly father because it doesn't matter how bad the circumstance is or how dry our season is, God has a way of providing exactly what his people need, what you and I need to complete the work, the assignment, or to manifest what God has placed in it. That's the only way we're going to change this world if we become manifestors of God's glory. And to do that, we got to know our purpose, have to know our assignment, and we have to begin to walk in it, to work in it. So, God has um, 
a way of providing exactly what we need, right, to complete his work. He does this because his will must and will be fulfilled. And you have to say that. You have to tell yourself that, God, I'm going to allow your will to be done in my life. And when we commit to allowing God's will to be done in our life, then we experience a manifestation of his glory and his power in our lives. So in this season, it's not about if you eat. See, the disciples here in John 4 uh, were concerned. They already went into town. Remember, this is, we're talking about, this is uh, right after the encounter that Jesus had with the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says, if you read up a little further in verses 6 through 8, that Jesus was tired. He and the disciples had been traveling. Uh, one translation said he, he, was, um, he was weary. And he saw this well. He decided to, you know, take a sit down to rest here at this well. And it happened to be a well that uh, the Samaritans used to not only uh, provide drink to themselves, but also their flocks. And there was a woman that he met there. Many of us are familiar with this encounter, Jesus and the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Um, the point I want to pull out about that is, is that Jesus was two things hungry or three things. He was tired. He was hungry and he was thirsty. And he decided not to go into town with the disciples to buy something to eat. Instead, he sent them for it. He told them to go, go ahead, go into town, buy something to eat. I'm going to stay right here. And he decides to ask this Samaritan woman from a drink from this well. Okay. So we fast forward a little bit. Right. And, and here's the thing. When, when we when I think about this, this passage, I think about this entire chapter, of John four, God has a way when we feel like we're tired, we can't go on any further. Um, we're, we're, we're looking where where can we get some find something to drink, find something to eat from. God has a way of ministering to us right where we are. Sometimes the best thing to do is to sit down so that God can minister to you. Jesus had been ministering um, from one place to another. He had just understood, um, just coming out of this bapt uh, baptizing so many folks. You know, uh, John was baptizing. His disciples were baptizing. And Jesus was ministering to, you know, the multitude. And now he has gotten to a place where he's just tired and, and he can't go on any further. He was, uh, again, not only uh, God manifested in the flesh, but he also had this human this humanity side of him that needed to be ministered to. And, and, and it's encouraging to me to see Jesus take a break and ask the Samaritan woman to minister to him. And sometimes the best thing we can do in seasons like this is to sit down and take a break and let God send uh, some resources, some nourishment, since someone to minister to us has nothing to do with you being lazy, has nothing to do with you not wanting to work. But sometimes we get to a place in our walk in the body of Christ where God says, just rest and watch me provide in this season. And, and, and this is what I like about this. As we move on further, Jesus was just being obedient to the father. And so he rested right there when the disciples went forward to find some nourishment and some food. And when they came back, they were ready to feed Jesus. They knew that he was tired. I mean, I'm sure they were excited. Um, they were they, they, they were ecstatic about being able to minister to the Messiah. And, and when they come to him, they get to him. This is what they say. Rabbi, eat something in verse 31. Rabbi, eat something. Jesus replies, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Verse 33, did something did someone, the disciples were wondering, bring him some food while we were gone? We wanted to be the ones to feed Jesus. You know, listen, uh, when you eat, it's just as important as what you eat. When you eat, it's just as important as what you eat. And I, I, could, I could probably imagine just using my creativity that disciples probably couldn't even wait till they got back um, to eat. They probably were so hungry themselves that some of them probably grabbed a little snack while they were in town, probably took a little bit of the, uh, the food and, 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 and some of the drink they purchased and, you know, nibbled on it, drunk some of it on the way to Jesus. You know, they were sure to leave him something, but I'm sure some of them just couldn't wait because if Jesus was famished, hungry and thirsty, they more than likely was as well. When you eat is just support as what you eat. Just because everybody is eating 
does it mean that you have to eat as well? You know, two things come to mind when I think about that. One, there have been times where, you know, I've had family go out to these buffets. You know, of course, this is before COVID season, you know, this whole COVID pandemic. But they'll go out to the buffet and they are inviting me and my family out and we'll go out and they'll all be eating. And and, and I, I just I don't feel led to eat. I don't feel led to partake. But I, I do want a fellowship. So I go out and fellowship with them. And some of them think it's strange. Like, Stephen, you know, I don't want to eat in front of you. I feel bad that I'm partaking in this buffet and you're not eating. Is everything OK? Is something wrong? No, everything is fine. Um, but I don't feel led to eat. I'm OK right now. Go ahead and eat. Enjoy yourselves. We can still shoot the breeze. We can still fellowship. But don't feel bad because. I'm not going to eat right now. When you eat, it's just as important as what you eat. And then, you know, God bless it. You know, he blessed us with this this, this little adorable dog. And we thank God for, for Brother Jackson here, uh, you know, seven months old right now. And, 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 and what I've noticed about him is that anytime we eat, especially when he's out of his cage, he comes over and he thinks that it's time for him to eat as well. And he'll literally sit there and, and he'll look up just waiting for us to drop something uh, in front of him or give him something so that he can eat. Um, but it's not just because we're eating. It's not necessarily his time to eat. Here's the thing. He always has food in his food pan. Whether or not he eats it is on him. He can't expect that just because we're eating that he's going to also be able to eat as well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so here's the thing. Jesus says in verse 35, I'm going to jump on down right here to the main verse. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for the harvest. Some people are looking around and, and just because you're eating, just because you're receiving, they want something. They expect to get something. They feel entitled. They feel like they need something. But what Jesus, God just told me right now is that some of us are just like little Jackson, is that we already have food in our pan. The field is already harvest. See, some people are waiting. There's people that are waiting for what they planted to, to, to produce. They're waiting for their harvest time and their harvest season. But you know what? Right now, we're in a time and we're in a season where right now I decree, right? We're talking about manifestation the, of, of the power of God. And I believe right now that what we plant in this season, we will not have to wait the normal time of harvesting a uh, uh, a waiting season period that typical season uh, uh, a time of between planting and harvesting for us to to receive and to enjoy the fruit of our labor but i believe right now that we live in a, we're in a time where we're going to plant i'm already seeing experiencing right now i are already ready to create and declare it in the name of jesus that what i plant right now what i sow right now i'm going to receive a uh, atypical, a non-typical, an unusual harvest out of season. We already have food in our bowl. Some of us don't realize we're just like little Jackson. My dog is that you got food in your bowl and you're looking around and looking everywhere else to be fed just because other people are eating and you want their food. But God is saying, wake up, look at the fields. The harvest is already there for the picking. The question is two things. One, is your eyes open? Two questions. One, are your eyes open? Do you realize that the harvest is here? It's already here, right? So first, wake up. Are you awake? And then secondly, are you looking at your field? Look at the field. It's already ripe. You just got to work and complete it. You got to go out to complete the work. That's what Jesus was saying. I'm here to complete the work. You know, we, we, we talk about reaping. We talk about reaping a harvest. How many of us are willing and ready to go out and to pick what's in our fields? It's already ripe. The, the fruit is already ripe and ready for the picking. Are you willing to do the work? Jesus says, I, 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 I come to do the will of my father. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. We are fulfilled not just by the, this worldly natural food, but God has provided us spiritual food that will fill our spirits 
that will cause a manifestation of his glory in our life, in our lives, and that will, will, will also cause us to walk fully in our divine purpose and will cause us to fulfill our assignment. Listen, I want to invite you, if you haven't done so already, to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And you can do that by just saying, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But I thank you because I'm saved by the grace of God. And I believe that not only was Jesus born, you sent Jesus back to die on the cross for my sins, but he rose again on the third day just for me. And because he died, the blood he shed covers my sins and I've been forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me, for saving me. Fill me right now with your precious Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. If you said that prayer with me, I believe that you're saved. And I believe also that Jesus has filled you. I encourage you to connect, to get in with the local um, group, body of believers. Um, we definitely would love to hear for, from you here at Everlasting Life Christian Church. And you can connect with us via um, our Facebook page, Everlasting Life Christian Church. Uh, we also encourage you to su subscribe to our YouTube, um, our, U our YouTube as well. And, and we also encourage you to visit our website, elchristianchurch.com. Dot com, um, so that you can also uh, find out what we have going on, what we have coming up, where we are in, in our building and in, in our own growth as a body of believers. So listen, thank you so much for your time. Um, I pray God's speed that he will continue to be with you. They will continue to keep you. We love you all very much. Please keep us in your prayers. We will always do the same. God bless you.